for those who are not able to meet us today. Um, now I have, uh, Mason, I finally have arranged my palette <laughs> and I'm so happy with it. Um, it's so wonderful because I, I, I've been trying to streamline my, um, my art setup here because it's just kind of keeps exploding. And uh, it's been really great to have this palette to have a little more room for mixing, but also more room for full pans and colors. And I ended up putting, um, this is a, a cool yellow, but I, I put it next to my blues to make green. And I have, I have yellows up here, but I also, you know, yellow is, is corrupted so easily that I wanted a separate pan of, of, of a cool yellow to mix green. Um, because then I, I, so then I don't make this green, you know, like just if, if I get a tiny bit of blue in there, it turns it to green. And I also don't need as much cool yellow other than for mixing greens. So I didn't have as much up there, but um, you know, and some of these colors may not make the cut, but I like having the space and kind of space to keep my, my light colors pure and, um, and to mix and stuff. So I'm, I've been really happy with this. Did I see underneath you have kind of a key so you can tell what is what? Oh yeah, I made this. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out to me, Teresa. Um, so I made a, um, a guide for my colors. Uh, you know, I was really resistant to this for a long time. I have a teacher, Amy, who would recommend doing it. And I just kind of never did because I was like, I know what my colors are, but <laughs> they do really look different. Um, especially like some of these, I was like, oh, I don't even remember what I put there. And I couldn't, oh. I couldn't tell it straight. These I got mixed up. So, but on this, I also ended up, um, I, I, scrubbed it out so that I could show myself what, what how it lifts, whether it stains, um, how it lifts. So it's, it's actually a really helpful guide. Unfortunately, I wrote some of the things in not waterproof pens. So that's getting kind of corrupted. And this will probably change as I change things around, but it's been, it's been really helpful. Um, and probably as I move along, you know, I can kind of pack it up like that and then and then take this with me so yeah so i'm really happy that i did that too all right plus it was fun and it got me excited to use it okay <laughs> so now what i'd like to do is i would like to do this um little still life here and uh we're not going to do a black background um, some of us do not have proper watercolor paper to do a black background. So if you do and you want to do that later, that's cool. Otherwise, I might recommend um, even just using like a pen and maybe doing some graphics behind here or something like that might be fun. However you want to do the background. But, um, you know, backgrounds are something that unless you really have good paper, like Mason was just showing us, it's hard to make that work in a satisfactory manner. Even the Stillman and Burns book that I have, um, I don't know if I have an example. Well, well, no, that I kind of did messy, so I can't really, even this kind of paper, it just, it doesn't, it'll kind of like the paint will kind of like bloom and move and dry in different places. So it's not going to be like a flat wash. That's, you really need proper cotton rag paper to do that. So rather than have people, uh, be uh, frustrated with their experience. We will just um, uh, we'll just skip the background, and I'll let you guys use your artistic license for how you want to handle that. Um, so I'm just going to set this up quickly because I want to I want to show you how I want to do the drawing. Um, so first, I want to give myself kind of a it's not a horizon line, but it's a uh, kind of a horizon line. Um, this is going to be the, the edge of the table. Okay. So everything in my still life needs to be below here. Otherwise it's falling off the table. Uh, actually, I can show you something in this picture. Hi, Anne. Hi. I can show you something in this picture where I did my bowl. And then I don't know if you can see this, but I have little pencil lines here. 
-hmm. And I left them there because I wanted to show you that I'd made a mistake because I realized, oh, if that's where my line is, my table is, then this bowl is falling off my table. <laughs> so I moved it back and then just kind of put some paint down here to give, you know, more of a composition rather than having a floating bowl on the page. You know, I want to give it something to sit on. Um, but obviously I got it wrong here. I was like, whoa, that bowl is totally teetering on the edge of that table. That's not going to work at all. So we want to make sure that all of our objects here, you know, that they have room on the table. Um, so we have five, well, I guess technically these are two, but we have five or six or seven, I guess seven technically objects. And so I want all of these to be on the table. And I'm gonna start with, now technically, usually they, I would say start with the ones in front, but I do wanna make sure, this, this is the only non-organic object I have here. And I wanna make sure that this one gets on the table without falling off. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that here. Now I'm holding my pencil really I light. Question. Question? Yeah, go for it. Okay, in the photograph, where where is the horizon line? In the photograph. Ah, you can't see it. No, but I mean, if you if you drew one in, where would you draw it? Well, you could draw it anywhere, really. I mean, you could draw it up here. Oh, you could okay. draw it here. If you draw it here, it's going to fall off. Okay. So there's that's there's a where it looks like in the you know in the I have a, I did yeah. it color and it's like a it's like a brown table that I don't know where it ends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's probably right here. Okay. But the only thing we need to, you know, it doesn't really matter. The only thing we can't do is we can't let our objects fall off like my bowl. So it can't be here because then, then my honey jar is going to fall off the table, but it could be, it could even be here, I guess, maybe, I mean, maybe there's a point where the eye would think that looks weird. Let me see. I mean, it's definitely possible that this is that this is not at the edge of the table. And so the photograph, I think the, the, the short answer is there's a range of places where it will work, but then we're out of range, right? And then you were talking about the thirds. It seems like the jar is like it's perfectly in the thirds. You know, a third above is nothing. and in the jar and then third below is nothing right yeah so this is why this is why for be beginners if you are going to use a photograph i really recommend a professional photograph because the artist the photographer artist has worked out all that for you um the reason why i like using um these kind of still lifes from a from a professional photograph is they have worked out the light source Everything, this is so obvious where the light is, okay? The light is coming from this way, right? You can all see that, yeah? Because yeah? mm -hmm. the highlight is here. So if I'm looking at a photograph and I'm trying to see, well, where's the light coming from? This, this artist has made it super easy for me. They've arranged this. I mean, I, I'm actually gonna arrange things a little differently and we'll talk about that in a second, but that's also because I've been doing this for a while. And so I kind of know that I can move things around. I do not feel wedded to a photograph, but if you take your own photograph and then you're wedded to that photograph, you're gonna have bad composition and bad light in your finished work until you get in the habit of figuring out, okay, where is my light source? And then making all of your design decisions and light and shadow decisions when you've decided where the light source is coming from. But until you get in that habit and you can kind of see it, I recommend, you know, using, I, th I think frankly, doing, doing pictures from a professional still life is an excellent beginner exercise because they work out the light for you and they work out the composition for you. Uh, and it just makes it a lot easier to learn. And after you do, like I did these, I did a ton of these. I, I have a shadow box and I would make my own still light, but I would have the light coming from a very obvious source. And then after I practiced that a bit, now I can decide on my own, oh, okay, my light's going to come from the left. And so, you know, like with this guy, I took this picture in Hawaii um, it was not a good, it wasn't even a good plumeria. This poor flower was like in the concrete or something, but, and there was no like obvious light source, but 
I can decide where the light is going to come from uh, when I do, you know, when I'm kind of feeling in my, my darks and shadows, but that's, that's a harder, it's just harder to learn that and, and to put it in the right place. So that's why we're using this professional photo. But yeah, that's a really good question. So in fact, I'm actually going to do right now. Um, okay, I'm actually not going to change this photo. But let me tell you, if I was going to change the photo, I would actually move this over here. Yes. Yes. Don't you think? Martha, why are you saying yes? Because I was taught you don't put something right in the center. Right. It's right in the center. This is not the interesting focal point. Because we have a rule of thirds. It's great this way, but it's not great this way. It's right in the middle. So compositionally, I mean, if it's a square, actually, maybe that's what we should do. Maybe we should make this a square. Because if it's a square, then it works. Then we can use the middle. But if it's not a square, then this is not interesting to the eye. This is all about how the viewer sees it and in Western culture, we go, we go left to right and that's how we read. And so that's how we read, that's how we read art. And the other reason I don't like this here is because this kind of blocks the viewer and kind of falls off. So what I would do if I were doing, let's say if I'm just doing a thumbnail of this, let me get a little scrap of paper here. So here's my, here's my rule of thirds here. I would actually put this over here. And I would probably put everything else on the other side. Mm -hmm. And the reason I would do it that way is because then this um, kind of blocks my viewer from leaving the page. Because what this does to me, this, this composition this way, okay, I just got done telling you, oh, professional art, protect, professional photographers, they do it perfectly. Now I'm telling you all the ways this one's wrong. <laughs> oh, well. Um, but what this one does to me is it comes up here, it kind of blocks the view and then it comes down again. I don't know, I just, it's not perfect, you know? Um, whereas if we do it this way, then this object kind of blocks my viewer. I could, I could use my paint to make these, these highlights really interesting and maybe make them kind of drip down. That is what I'm going to do, but maybe make it kind of drip down so that my viewer is then like, oh, what's going on down here? Let's see what's going on down here. And then going back around to that, I might even have wanted something that took up some space right here you know, so that it wasn't just these little things and then this tall thing, you know, there's, there's, there's different ways that I would change this. For purposes of this exercise and given some of the, um, since we're at different skill levels, I'll just do it the way that it is. But these are all good things to think about because this is, this is why artists call these photo references, okay? And I want you as artists to always, my husband, you know, he's always, I, I'm, I'm constantly like, stop, stop. I need to take a photo reference. I don't even call it a <laughs> photo anymore. It's actually a photo reference to me because I'm not going to do it necessarily just the way the photo works out. I have the right to move things around. And as I'm learning what's interesting to me and how it works, you know, then you just get a little more bold about that. But for now, let's do it the wrong way or not the wrong way, but, you know, I will say there, there's, there's a way that we can actually make this composition work too, is if we keep this highlight really clean. Um, well, that's not true. I still, I still would prefer this to be over here, but even within this shape, we can accentuate different shapes. Okay. So I could, this is dark and this is light. And maybe, maybe this was what is important. You know, maybe, so let's talk about focal point for a second. So the focal point is, you know, what, what is the key part of the picture? Um, and that kind of depends on how we apply the paint. And so maybe, you know, maybe this was meant to be the focal point, all of these, because I think this reflection part is really cool. And that's actually one of the reasons I chose this is Martha and other people were talking about how do you paint reflections? Um, so that's one of the reasons I chose this picture. 
so, you know, maybe we make this more interesting. And so then um, that becomes kind of the, the shape more than the, the entire honey jar. Okay, you guys, oh my gosh, I've changed my mind again. I'm going to do it the way I want to, which is the honey jar is going over here. Okay. All right. I'm committed. Okay, so how am I setting this up? So I've done this little thumbnail. I, that's not really a thumbnail because I, I don't know if I'm gonna do it that way, but doing a little drawing like this is a really good exercise. Um, we won't do that today so much, but, um, but it, it, it's something that we can do next time. Um, and think about that more, but I'm holding my pencil super loose. I'm, I'm applying my pencil with a very light hand because I may erase, okay? I may decide that this isn't how I want it to go. But for now, let's just go ahead and get this thing in here. And now you see that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving all the detail. This is a big mistake that people make when they draw is to add a bunch of detail. Like you start doing the eye when you don't even know that you have the wing in the right place. You know, don't, that's why we're, we're gonna just put all the objects in or at least all the objects that we want. And this is pretty, in the picture, it's pretty flat. You know, this is kind of head on. And I haven't, I haven't done it that way. I've done some ellipses here, but let me try to try to flatten this out a little bit. Cause I know like Elizabeth's gonna look at this later and be like, oh my gosh, this is nothing like the picture. What are you even talking about? So <laughs> let, let me try to help her out a little bit. Um, okay. And then I'm gonna have, let's see, I have this, let's put this orange over here. And then let's put maybe a flower back here. And then these orange segments here. Okay, so this is actually a really good, this one in the middle is excellent foreshortening. Those are scary words. But all mm -hmm. it means is that this piece, like we all know that this segment is probably longer than it is wide, but because of the placement, it looks like it's half and half. And so those are just things that we need to kind of keep in mind as we're doing our drawing. And then we, you know, we, we, we fix that with shadow, but then we have a better chance of getting it right if we know that that's how that works. Okay, that one's kind of crawling up a little bit. Uh, let's do this one here. And maybe this one over here. Mason, what are you working on tonight? Uh, I'm, I'm following along with you. Oh, right on. Okay. Okay, so I'm not really thrilled with my composition either, but that's all right. Okay, now I did clean out my Lamy pens, and so I can use these little babes, which are fun. Um, so then what I'm gonna do, now that I have this kind of down, and I know that my light source is coming from over here, and let me show you my little trick. If you've worked with me before, you already know my little trick. But I actually take some paint, and I put that over in the corner. And honestly, if you're new to learning about light and shadow, I really recommend doing this. I will tell you that now I do not do this. If it's a simple painting, what I would call simple to me, but I do it if it's a complicated painting to me because I'm going to lose track. I'm just telling you, once I get going, I'm going to forget where my light is supposed to come from. So if I'm doing like a scene with buildings and stuff, I will totally put this yellow dot here because I'm going to forget which side the shadows should be on. And nothing looks weirder to the eye than having cast shadows on both sides. <laughs> that's, just, that's just wrong. It's just not how light works. All right. So now I'm going to... Um, so. Now that I have my shapes in, in space, I am gonna start with this orange in front and I'm gonna hold my pen loosely.
and so just what, kind of what put is, what's in your pen is it what is that so it's black ink oh it is okay yeah it's not this pen has seen better days and it was kind of sad for it was dried up and sad for a while so it may not be as juicy as it should be huh. um but that's what's in there now i don't really have room for all three of these wedges so i'm just going to do two Again, artistic license. And I'll try to push a little harder so that maybe. You can see a little better. And then after I do this, I'm going to erase the pencil. Okay, now here's where the light and shadow part gets a little more tricky on this flower because I want to give some definition to those petals, but I really don't want black right in the line of my light, right? Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to kind of accentuate some petals down here. And I'm, you see, I'm holding my pen so weird right now. And I'm holding it, I'm pushing down really softly because really all I want is to give the impression of some, of some petals. I'm just, I'm just making some marks, making some lines. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do some over there too. And actually what I'm gonna do when I do the background is I'm gonna, um, uh, I'm gonna do some negative painting as Mary was talking about and let my petals be up here and be white. And we'll do that with uh, the wax too. But next, let me get to the big kahuna here. Now for here, since this is an, or, an inorganic object, I am gonna tighten up a little bit because now I kind of want my lines to be a little, a little straighter. And I'm just gonna do all of the lines, but I'll tell you that if I were doing this on my own, I would not do the lines over here. For the same reason I don't wanna do them on the petals, I would want the light to be hitting not a black line, but just for purposes of the exercise and so you can see, I wanna be able to um, I'll, I'll add those lines too so that you can see them. So what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of, I'm, I'm showing myself where's this curve because I need these curves to be the same. And so I'm kind of ghost writing so I can get the swing of that curve. So then I can come up here and kind of get the same curvature up here. And I, I wrote some extra lines, that's okay. Now on my copy, I can't really see this very well but it looks like it kind of burbles a little like that or something, so, so that's okay. And then maybe to remind myself that this is where kind of the honey is, um, I might add that line and then we need some more lines down here. That'll be good, that's the only one we can see. You know, it obviously doesn't have to be, this is why still lifes are so great because it doesn't have to be this jar exactly it'll, it'll look like a jar all right and i'm not gonna do i will say to Lisbeth, who is not here but does not have paint either um anyone who wants to try this without painting to just do it as a pencil exercise you can totally do these these highlights those are just shapes. And one thing that I recommend is turn it sideways and then you can really see the shapes. You know, they're just lines and shapes. Um, let me just go ahead and do that because that'll be a good learning exercise too. So I'm gonna turn the paper sideways and then just go ahead and, you know, I see, I see this shape and I see, this shape and this shape. So when people ask me, how do you do reflections? This is, it's just shapes. 
and just kind of like reading where they are. And sometimes it's hard to decide where the shapes are. Wait a second, that didn't make any sense. Sorry, I got so lost in my own drawing that my mouth was talking and I was not paying attention to what was coming out. Um, sometimes it is hard to, if it, if it seems hard to see the shapes, try turning it sideways because then your brain has less, it's the, it's the drawing on the right side of the brain thing. I'm sorry, my brain is not working very well these days. You guys bear with me. But I think you're, 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 you, what we want to do, what, when drawing really gets fun is when you start drawing on the right side of the brain, meaning all you're doing is, oh, this line comes up here and then it comes down here. Oh, and this line comes over here. And then this line is this far away from this line. And you can even draw a face like that, you know, like, but when you're looking at it and it's a face and it's scary and all that stuff, it gets really kind of complicated. So sometimes, you know, even now when I'm drawing faces, I'll just, if I'm, if I'm wigging myself out too much, just turn it upside down or turn it sideways. Then you can just kind of see like, you don't have so much, your brain doesn't have attachment to it. It's not trying to categorize it. Then it can really see like, oh, it's just this shape and this shape and this shape. And it can, it can actually be a little easier. And so I'm just going to add some extra ones just for fun. But it can, it can be easier to actually register the shapes with your eyeballs if your brain isn't getting in the way of what it thinks it should be. All right. And then there's a lot of detail on this lid. Um, I will be very excited next week to see what Teresa does with her line work with those that detail, but I may be skipping it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> no pressure, though. No pressure. <laughs> All right. And then after everything kind of dries, we can just erase all the pencil. And if we have extra lines, that's OK. We're just having fun. I'm gonna leave this kind of horizon line here. Yeah, that looks fun. I'm excited to paint this. You know, the other thing, the other reason um, that I wanted to show up tonight is um, we have lots of excuses for not making art. I'm too tired, I'm too stressed, I'm sick. I don't have to make art when I'm sick. And that's true, but uh, sometimes I think it's good to just show up and just do it because it doesn't take a lot of energy and it's a very, um, it's just a very nice activity. And, and I just encourage you to really notice, like, how do you feel after you do it? So you see that I'm using a ruler and I, I told you that I do sometimes use a ruler when I'm doing my horizon line because, um, so that it doesn't go wonky because when your table is going wonky well actually that's not true I, I one of my favorite still lifes the tape the line in the back was going like this and it was really cool but like to do it on purpose is one thing to just have it kind of like veering off that looks funny so so i did kind of want to be a little more particular about that Okay, so then what we do is we get my, I'm going to call this my Mason, my Mason palette forever now. Because <laughs> I am so excited. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> mm. 
And then, I mean, other than the fact that this is honey and an orange and whatever, you know, we can, so, so I have, so, you know, uh, uh, you know how sometimes you go to a yoga or a exercise class and they're like, okay, you can have modifications. You can do this or you can keep your knee on the ground or whatever. So I'm going to give you some modifications. Um, you can do this in pencil if that, you know, if you're kind of new to drawing and because this is the thing, like when you're, when you're learning to paint, you're adding skills onto each other. And so you're already adding like eight skills when maybe, you know, I need to start with the drawing skills. So do it in pencil first and then paint it later or whatever. You know, that's one way that we can keep our knee on the ground. Another way to keep our knee on the ground is to do it in one color. Like take out the color choices. That's a really great way to keep it simple. You know, pick a color or two um, that if I was going to take one color, I would take a color that I can make dark. So like, for example, this raw umber here, I can have it be very light or if I really work in there, I can get it much darker. Okay. And then I can achieve different values with my paint. So, or you could take, you know, two colors, one, take a dark color and a light color. But, but basically it just helps you simplify so that you don't have so many choices. Um, so that's another great way to, you know, be able to learn without overwhelming ourselves. I've started, um, I went through a period where I'm feeling better now that I have my Mason palette and <laughs> have, have kind of confined my color choices. But for a while I would only pick three colors. I just felt like the color choices was really interfering with my ability to learn about light and shadow and edges and composition. Cause it's just a lot of different stuff going on in our mind. So think about, you know, maybe you just want to take turquoise and something dark and just paint with two colors so that you can achieve all the values that you need, but you don't have to, you don't have to be making all those color decisions because really one of our colors is going to be white. We're going to just leave some stuff white. So, so think about, you know, cutting yourself some slack while you're learning and making it a little easier. All right. And, and Marie, do you put the lines in or any indication for shadows at this stage, or do you do that later? Oh, that's a really good question. No, I do not put in lines for shadows because I, I did at first because I didn't want to lose them. But then I realized it looks really weird when you have like a line around your shadow. So I just prefer to do that with paint. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but but you but Jill, you reminded me one thing I do want to do is I do want to take my wax here and I do want to add some some little dots and dashes for my for my um, petals here. And I'm even gonna add some dots and dashes. I'm gonna leave a lot of this just white, but just in case, I'm gonna add a few dots and dashes here too. And maybe I'll even add some dots and dashes outside of these shapes. Um, does the candle that, does the candle work to protect the whites, or do you need exactly? To okay. No, this is the wax is a resist to your paint. So you only I don't know if you could tell in the screen, but I'm really doing dot like you would not want to cover a whole area because you will not be able to get paint on it after you put this this wax candle on it. Um, so just in dots and dashes, but that will protect your white. And then I'm going to start with um, a light color. And I'm actually going to use for this honey, I'm going to use, um, I have a color here called, oh, I forgot to spritz my colors. Let's do that first. I'm going to use this color called quinacrinone gold because it is kind of the color of honey. I bought it because it's also the color of, um, of uh, fall in Colorado. So that's one of my, that's one of my happy places and happy colors, but it will work well for, uh, for the honey. And I'm also going to mix because I don't want a flat color, right? I'm also going to mix a little bit more of this yellow here. 
And if you're just, if you're limiting to one color, then you just skip this part. You just make a big old luscious pile. Uh, and I'm sorry, what, what two colors are you mixing? I mixed, I'm using a cool yellow. This is a Hansa yellow light, but it could be anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a color called quinacridone gold, ah, yes. which is the color of Colorado fall. Yeah, it's just really lovely. Is it a Daniel I, Smith? Yeah, this one is the Daniel Smith. I just think this would be an, I figured this would be a good color for the honey. You know, I could also try a yellow ochre, which I have over here. Mm, this might be a little too brown. Mm, I don't know. Maybe that's all right for honey. Let me get a little bit more of that guy. The ochres, the, the ochres and the siennas, I don't know why I said ochres. I'm not sure there is more than one ochre, but um, there probably is. Mason, do you know there if there's are. more than yellow ochre? Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. so. So all those earth colors are very, they dry very hard. Um, so they're a little bit hard to work with, um, but still great and important for those natural, those more natural colors. Okay, so then last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and wet. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. I want to save some of this highlight and there's some, there's a highlight over there. Oh, good, I marked it. That's good, that's good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start putting water down Oh my goodness, is this not waterproof pen? No way. <laughs> okay, so this is what happens when you use not waterproof ink, which I was sure that was, but apparently it's not. So that's all right, that's all right. I'm just gonna now have to be kind of careful not to touch it unless I want it to run, which is not the worst thing in the world. Sometimes I like to use not waterproof ink because it's kind of fun. Did not think that's what was happening today. So I've wet my page and now I'm just gonna go ahead and drop some paint in. Ooh, look at how that, that uh, quinacridone gold is really exploding here. That's really pretty. And I noticed that it's a little darker in here down where that's happening. So I'm going to add, now I'm going to mix a little bit thicker paint because now that it's wet, I'm going to need more pigment compared to water to try to make that happen a little bit. And it still may not work because it is so wet, it's kind of running. I may just have to um, paint it on later or lift it. So now I'm just kind of lifting it out so I can give the illusion of the bottom of the jar. Now I have a really nice sable brush here. And as you know from classes, these work really well as our sponge. And so mine is lifting really well. Yours may not be, but, um, but you can still do it with a synthetic brush. You just kind of have to squeeze it out. And that's why a uh, paper towel is really helpful because we can squeeze the water out and then you just have to kind of do it a few more times and then it will, it will have the same kind of lifting properties. Yeah, that'll work. Now I don't like this hard line here, but I also need to be careful that I don't have a waterproof pen. 
So I'm going to try to just add some, I'm just going to move this color around so that I have some um, consistency. I don't have that hard line. Okay, now I don't know about you, but I like when I when I see this kind of thing happening, I have a little bit of color touching this. You know, a lot of times we'll notice that colors will bleed over into the object next to them. So rather than have that little line there, I'll just kind of, um, I should say that little spot of color, I'll just move it. And so now I have, I'm getting a little, a little um, symbiotic relationship between those two objects. I just dumped a bunch of water on here. I think what's what's really helpful about watercolor is once you start to figure out what it does, then you don't panic when something happens because you know you can kind of fix it and work with it and it's just all, it's all just part of the letting it do its thing. So that's, that's one thing I would like to, I would like you guys to all have an understanding of like, oh yeah, this is, this is what's going to happen or um, so that we can just be a little more loose with it. Would, would the jar really get lighter at the bottom or would it be darker? You know, that's funny. There's a weird, there's a weird thing about how the light is hitting this because there's obviously something, there's some light coming from the back. Um, is it reflecting yeah. off the tangerine? Yeah, it's definitely reflecting from the tangerine on the back here. That's a really good point. But there's also light right here. And so I think, and that could be like, who knows what's back here? Maybe there was a mirror or something, you know? So some of that, this is why like pictures can be a little confusing. And maybe if I was technically just having one light source, I wouldn't bother with the back of this. Um, yeah, I think that's a good question, Jill. I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a really good because I think it would get darker at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm seeing the picture that way, but I'm not sure that makes sense. So may and maybe, you know, what might happen is we paint this and then we decide, you know what, that looks weird. I'm just gonna paint over it. Okay, so now, I've, I have a bunch of different yellows here. So I'm just gonna take some, this is um, Rose Matter Permanent. And I'm just gonna take some of this and maybe some of this and make, well, maybe some of this. It's kind of good, you know, to keep your colors consistent if you can. So I'm just gonna use some of the yellow I already have and see, I'm gonna need more yellow to make an orange. Let's see what kind of orange I can make out of this. Mm, that's pretty good. And I might make, I'm gonna make two colors here. I'm gonna make a slightly redder orange and a yellower orange. This one, I might even add a little bit of this. And then I'm gonna wet this, this piece here and then kind of drop in some color and drop in some redder stuff at the bottom where the shadow would be. And maybe, since Jill has raised that good question, I'm even gonna tip my page and use this this little ball of uh, goodness here to cover that light, that light spot. Yeah. 
yeah, maybe we'll do something with ink or something uh, later on. Now, I, I really like to be very dramatic with my highlights. So as you can see, I'm leaving a spot where I'm just putting no paint at all. But I also want some um, symmetry in my background. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag some of this paint out. I think that's so funny that that was not, maybe that's why I stopped using those pens because I didn't get the right ink. Now they'll just be pens for my journal, I guess. Now, if I wanna add some more of this pink to make more of a shadow, because I think we've talked about this before, but these kind of tips are worth re-mentioning. Um, I'm looking for my color wheel here. One of the reasons that my colors look really clean is when I'm doing shadows, I just go next step over. So if I'm doing an orange, my shadow is a red orange or a red. You know, I don't do a blue. That's way over here. That's too, that's kind of going to deaden my subject. So I'm going to just drop in, now that this is nice and wet, I can just kind of drop in a little bit of shadow stuff down here. And a little bit up there, maybe where the stem would be. And then I can even kind of pull this around and just kind of let that flow a little bit. I don't know why I'm painting around these little guys, maybe because I wasn't quite sure what to do with them, but we better figure that out now. Um, Cause they have all this white stuff on them that I really don't feel like dealing with. So I think I'm just going to paint them. So this is one of the things, this quinacridone, this quinacridone gold is pushing all the color away. I don't know if you can see what's happening there. It's a very assertive color. Um, so that's kind of fun. Yeah. And that's going to be too wet for me to, you know, try to do anything else, like make a shadow on either of those. So I'm just going to let that dry for a little bit and then put the shadow on later. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> how it's moving around? Yeah, how you're just you just suck that up. <laughs> oh, I know with the with the sable brush, it acts like a sponge. These really are the best tools. If you haven't tried one in class yet, remind me and um and next time we're in person together, I'll let you use one. It's a big investment, but to, to me, I feel like next to paper, next to paper, the brush is a, su a super important part. Well, who am I kidding? The paint, the paper, and the brush. That's kind of, that, those are the important tools. <laughs> <laughs> and the pen. <laughs> and the pen. Only that it's not water soluble. That's really the only thing that matters. <laughs> But actually, you can get really great effects with a water soluble ink if you just yes. that and water. Yes, yes. I actually love doing that. Just taking like a blue, a normal blue pen, and then you just paint it with water and you just kind of drag the ink around. It's wonderful. I had one um, that started off as black and it turned out to be sepia and I loved it, ooh, but now I can't find any more. Oh, dang it. Oh, man. Yeah, that can be that can be really fun and really enjoyable. We just want to know when that's happening. And I did not know today. Um, okay. And then, you know, this is kind of, you know, I don't know, this is kind of striking me as a painting where 
I might want to let the ink work kind of shine on this one. I don't know why I say that. Maybe because my ink is already kind of like taking over by not being what I thought it was. And the fact that I kind of drew these, um, these highlights, you know, I wouldn't usually do that, but I just wanted to you to be able to see those shapes. Uh, but, you know, it might be one where I just do a couple layers of paint and then I just draw on it and have fun with it that way. Um, so we'll see. Um, but for this flower, I think what I want to do is I want to get a little more of this pink. And just have a little bit of, of the dot and dash there. Now on a white flower, I would actually even let um, yellow be my be my kind of shadow. The other thing I like about these sable brushes is they keep a point. So even though I have a pretty big brush, this is a 10 round, I can actually, because I have such a nice point on it, let me see if I can show you like that. I can even let this kind of guide, just adding a little bit more interest and definition to what's happening here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this phthalo blue okay you don't, you're not gonna do this because your paper might not be able to handle it. And I get a really light blue and I want to show you because I have this wax resist here. I'm turning my paper over. And um, I'm gonna try to see the wax. Okay, here we go. I said we weren't gonna do backgrounds and now I'm doing a background that's like cheating. But I just want you to see that because I have this wax resist here, I can't, you can see where I can't paint over it. And then I'm gonna to try to kind of move my brush around so I just don't have a flat line here. And I can play with the edges a little bit more. It's kind of fun. And you may ask, why does that look so dynamic with that blue on there, right? And I'll show you why. It's all about the color wheel. It's because orange and blue are opposites on the color wheel. This is my favorite, well, I should say today, this is my favorite complementary color combination. I seem to come back to this one all the time. Um, and actually, I'll take the spotlight off of this for a second and put the spotlight on me. Because you can see behind me here, my wall is blue and I have this orange pitcher. Yeah. That's, um, that's just kind of my favorite. It has been my favorite complimentary color combination for a while. And so now I have a lot of like white space on this flower. And so I need to do something about that. So let's kind of, and I'm really, um, I don't know if this is even gonna read like a flower when I'm done. I just kind of, it just kind of looks like a mess. And I also, I know that I can go back in with ink and kind of add a little more detail if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't look right. But at some point, you know, we select these, we select these still lifes and we, and we, you know, do our thing. But at some point the picture doesn't matter. Well, I guess kind of right away because we didn't even use the picture the way <laughs> that it is. But even if we do it the way that it is, you know, at some point what we need to do is just kind of see if, 
you know, does this look like a flower? Is this shadowed correctly? And then that's the stage where I feel like it's really fun because I'm not looking at the photo reference. I'm really just kind of communing with my, with my picture and seeing if I like what's happening and, and, and what is happening. Um, so now I'm kind of done with my picture for a while and I'm gonna come in here and maybe do this lid. And all the bleeding that happens with watercolor, you know, to me, that's just the fun part. So don't, if you have objects that touch and they bleed, just let that happen. I mean, you know, there's, there's times when you don't want it to happen, like on the bird's eye or something. But other than that, you know, just let it happen. Especially because we can always, you know, try to, try to keep in mind that, you know, this is a process and we can, we can go over it later and do different things. Sometimes if I have a bleed where I'm losing the shape of my object, like maybe right here, that's okay. Cause when this dries, I'm just gonna make one of these lines harder. It's really wet right now, but I think I could still go in and do, um, I can put in some shadows now. This is actually, Jill, I think you were asking this. This is a good time to put in the shadow when I have kind of the first layer down, then I can go in and put in the shadows and it, it, it will make the picture make more sense already. So, um, you know, I'm gonna get my little cheat sheet here because I'm pretty sure this is my phthalo, yeah. This is my phthalo blue right here. And I like, um, for shadows, I like blue and green. And sometimes I add a little purple. I might add blue and green and a little purple for a little interest. A little variety in my shadow. You know, I also really like, um, you know, you can get half pans and full pans in your palette. I really like full pans because then you can use a whole brush stroke to loosen your paint. I just find it much more, much more convenient. Okay, so let's test these little colors I got here. That's pretty light. And I want to do a little bit more. Oh, whoa. These thalo blues, they're also called Windsor blues. They are so strong, such strong pigment. Okay, I like that. And I'm also liking that I have some of this leakage from um, the red here, well, the pink, because that's how, that's how shadows are. You know, they might have some color from, from our other, uh, from our object too. Okay. So if my light's coming from here, it's actually hitting this pretty, um, pretty hard that way. So I'm gonna say that they're gonna be a little flatter this way. Ooh, that's pretty dark. Hmm. Okay, this is where it's great to have a paper towel next to you because I'm put, I've put this down and that just looks like, I mean, that might be right, but that's pretty dark compared to what I got going on right now. So I'm just gonna lift some of it and maybe add a little bit more water. And I feel like maybe this flower might be casting a little bit of shadow here. So let's do something like that. You know, it's good to kind of, I can see my picture in actually in the screen, it looks, um, 
looking at it on my computer screen kind of helps me see what looks right and what looks wrong, which is why I like uh, encouraging you to look at your work from afar because it's a lot easier to see when you look at it from afar than when we're hovering over it. And then you can just kind of see, oh yeah, that looks funny or that should be darker or that shadow is not in the right place, whatever we got going on. Yeah. Oh, and I also need, I need some shadows up in this jar. So if anyone gets to a place where um, they can pick up their work and show it to us, we would love to see. I know that's a little bit difficult when, ooh, that's way too dark. So this is really the only time that I use um, tissue for lifting is when I put something down that's too dark. Otherwise, I think it's sort of like um, when you're learning to draw, you shouldn't use an eraser because you just, you'll spend too much time erasing. When you're learning to paint, I don't recommend using this to dab because you'll just spend too much time dabbing. You know, it's like, oh my God, the watercolor's running. Let's dab it. Oh God, oh God, you know. So we just, we don't want to, we don't want to be doing that. We just want to let it do what it does and kind of get comfortable with it. But when I've put something down that looks way too dark, then I, then I do lift it. How are we doing out there? <laughs> yes, no. Oh, having fun. <laughs> having fun. That's the main thing. <laughs> That's so, the main so thing I that matters. That you put your um your shadow of your of your honey jar goes up to your horizon line. Yeah, I did do that. Um is that I don't know if that's I don't know if that's right or not, but it kind of looked right to me. Does it look right to you? Uh, I don't know. Or, or does it look too tall? I'm not sure. It's hard for me. It, to could, be, it could be too tall. But let me, let, be, let me lift some angle? of it. And, would it. I'm sorry, Pamela, what was that? Would it be at an angle going down? If the light's coming from there? You know, I think because our composition ends, there would be different things happening here that we're not, we're not going to be able to see. But I yeah. see what you're saying, that maybe it would come more this way. Yeah, that could totally be. That could totally well, be. Well, but it would come from the top of the jar, though, wouldn't it? So it should cover that whole. I was thinking that it was coming out more this way. Yeah. But again, it's just a matter of like what I think you know shadows can do lots of different things the main thing is like does it look wrong you know and so if it looks wrong then you should fix it yeah. um I don't think this looks wrong but I could also see that different things could be happening and actually now I've, I've lifted that and shortened it and that kind of looks funny to me yeah um so I think maybe I'll just put back in, you know, a little bit more color there. And so here's what's happening here, guys, is I've lifted it. And so now it's really wet. And then I put in kind of the same pigment to water ratio that I did the shadow. But if I want to compete with all the water that I have here, then I have to add more pigment because I need, I, I need, a, I, I need more pigment to water to compete with all the water that's there. So if you put pigment down and it's just like um, uh, kind of pooling and pushing away and not really adding value, it's because there's too much water. You need more, you need more paint. Yeah, I think that looks okay. And I think different shadows could also look okay. 
so I'm going to, let's see here. I want to add, I need to add some depth to these. Oh, this is going to be kind of funny. So I need to add some depth to these orange slices, but I'm going to, this shadow is going to leak if, when I do this. But that's okay, because I think this is too hard of a line anyway, so I can actually kind of soften it and let those leak on purpose. And the same with this one. So I don't really like this hard line that's happening on the top. So I'm just kind of flicking my brush and I'm just gonna kind of soften that, soften that out. I do need something more happening on the back of this because right now my, my, the side of the lid has no definition, but I need to let that, well, I could try um, to add, you know, take more pigment. And if I tilt my paper, I might be able to keep it down here instead of having it go up, having the paint run up into the lid, although it's running into the shadow there, but that's okay. I mean, again, those are all the effects of, of watercolor that I really like, is that it kind of runs together and does different things. But, you know, don't forget that you can tilt your paper if it's running a way that you don't want it to, you know, kind of tilt your paper. Now, one thing I really don't like is this. This is way too hard of a line here. So I'm going to, Take my brush and flick it a little bit. I'm not going to soften the whole thing because then I just have the problem the other way. Instead of a too hard of a line, I have too soft of a line. So look up here for just a second if you have a chance to do that. I'm going to I'm going to take a wet brush and just kind of with dots and dashes, I'm going to move some of this paint into the orange. That's a little bit better. This is a pretty severe shadow. Um, so I think what I also wanna do is I wanna lift some of it. And you know, I'm kind of sensing that this is one of those times where you have a mistake in watercolor and there just isn't a lot you can do with it. But I'm gonna try, I can soften this line here and get some of that paint out. I can also soften this line here. And if I'm always moving my brush in line with the object, you know, I can, I can, I can't fix the mistake, but I can lessen the, the error. Let's put it that way. And then I can even come back in now. Oopsie. Yeah, that might be all right. I can come back in now with more pigment, more of this pink pigment, and drop some of this in here and see if I can kind of get my orange back. Oh man, this poor guy, I'm just massacring him. <laughs> just every time I touch him, it's worse. <laughs> Still looks better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so now he's kind of like a big blob. And I'll soften that out a little bit, maybe come up here a little bit and then just kind of move that paint around like that. And that's all right. Whoops, oh, no way, you wouldn't believe what I did. Uh oh <laughs> I dumped all of that blue paint upside down. Oh. oh, I can't believe that didn't get on my skirt. There's a, uh, this paint, that's a, phthalo blue is a very staining color. So I'm very lucky that did not get on my skirt. Okay, all right. So now I think the main thing, again, just looking at the picture, not, um, not my photo reference is I, I, I do want to soften some of these shadows, but I'm kind of thinking it might be time to get out a drawing tool and 
see what I can do that way. I think I want a little bit of a shadow under this and maybe even, hmm, I'm a little wary to sacrifice the highlight on my orange, but I, I do feel like there needs to be a little bit of shadow going on under that flower. I need something a little darker on the back of this. I think I can do it. Sometimes you can even just use a more of the color that you just had. So I'm gonna to try to darken the backside of the honey, but I'm just gonna use this quinacridone gold again. And um, because watercolor is transparent, it will actually build up with even just different layers of the same color. And then sometimes, you know, where you've tried to fix these mistakes, you've actually left um, a nice um, wet surface where uh, it's, it makes it much easier to, you know, softly add your paint because it's already ready to be softened because it's, it's, um, it's already wet. Now I'm gonna take a smaller brush, just to add a little more definition over here and kind of add some lines. To show a little bit more reflection. And I still think, I'm still not quite sure what to do down here because the picture wasn't super clear. And I still feel like this looks kind of flat, but I'm not really, to be honest with you, I'm just not really quite sure what to do. Wait, I think I might even want to. Great. Oh, what about that part though? You know, like it, I don't know that it looks like, yeah. Well, that's good, that's good. Sometimes you need somebody else to help you out. Maybe a little bit lower. Yeah, I, I am I am suffering a little bit down here. I'm suffering a little bit from the limitations of my paper. I'm using this um, Canson watercolor paper and it's just, um, it's one of the reasons I'm kind of thinking about moving to a drawing tool like a pen because things are just bleeding and I'm not able to get the definition that I want. If I was using the same paper that I'm using for the Fabriano paper that I'm using for this um, plumeria, I would just have a little bit more control, but I'm getting a lot of buckle. And so sometimes like when I tell students, you know, it's the paper and they don't believe me, they're like, no, it's obviously me. I'm like, no, actually it is the paper. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to shine you. I believe uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Because you know your your equipment. So well, and it is, you know, that's one of the reasons I, I do like to use different papers because you, you become very flex. And in fact, next week, well, you guys, I gotta check the quarantine rules because I think I can't meet with you in person next week. I think I have to wait for like five days after I'm symptom free. So we may have to do this on Zoom again next week just to be safe. But the following week, um, I'm bringing different, I want you guys to maybe even take home different, different papers to try because I've worked with so many different papers as I've, I've, you know, I would get, I would try a sketchbook and I wouldn't like it, but I would just use the whole thing because I figured, well, it's just good experience and it's good drawing, um, drawing experience. But it also helped me learn how to adjust my painting depending on the paper I'm using. And sometimes you just know, you know, I'm, I'm just, um, I mean, if I came back to this tomorrow and it's bone dry, yeah, I might be able to, to work with it, but it's kind of not worth it. You know, it's like, I can just use a pen. This is, there's no rules here. I'm not trying to be like a, 
I'm not putting this in a gallery where I can, I don't, I, I, where I want to be able to say it's only watercolor or something like that. You know, we don't need to be super particular about it. And I'm just thinking that I'm, I'm actually loving the, um, the looseness and the background of this. And I could add definitions so easily with a pen or, or, uh, or a, a, a colored pencil or, you know, whatever. So, um, so sometimes it's just easier to do the drawing tools that way to, to add and not to do the whole thing, but like some of the lines from, oh, Teresa, this is what I need, that white Windsor and Newton. Uh, Cause maybe I could add some pith here. Well, cool. let's see here. I, I got all kinds of white pens. We might as well give them a try. <laughs> Uh, let's see, I got white ink and I got white pens and I got, actually this is masking fluid in a pen. Ooh, that's um, cool. Yeah, that might've been fun, but here's another pen. Here's um, India ink. Ooh, let's try this guy. white India ink. Actually, this might be the same as the Windsor and Newton. All right. What's going on here? So maybe I could add a little, um, now I'm gonna add a little of this pith. Um, but here's where, you know, we want to, oh, goodness, we want to be careful not to just drop right onto our paper. But we also, we want to be careful about, you know, notice the lines and the direction that they go. Mary, it's like the, uh, when we were talking about the mountain, you know, the mm -hmm. direction of the glaciers. We want to think about, you know, the direction of, mm, doesn't want to work at all because the pith is, it's flattened. Oh man, I'm just making a mess. So as I'm drawing this, I want to think about, um, well, I want to think about how this is not working at all. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to stop at seven and, and can we share what we have? I, I, I do not have to stop exactly at oh, seven. Great. I realize it is, it is tight, but we're still having fun. And frankly, this is the first time I've had fun since I got sick. So <laughs> but, great, great. let's keep going. But I would, if you need to hop off, I totally get it. And thank you for coming. And if you would like to share where you are and you, and your paper is not too wet to pick up, let me know and I will spotlight you. I'm, I'm ready to share because I feel like I'm overdoing it. Okay. And I Let's hate my it. paper. Oh, you hate your paper. I hate oh. the paper. Oh, oh my gosh. That Ooh, looks look beautiful. Your orange, oh. Look at your orange wedges, though. Those are great. Yeah. Those, Those are so to do the background, good. The, the background, that brown, and have yes. saddles at the bottom. Forget it. I mean, highlight yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. 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 I know. I like everything a, really well, but the background is not a good color. No. <laughs> Well, Dark it also, room. you know, it's the limitation of the paper too, because you're getting splotches, right? Yes, yes, you can definitely see that in this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but everything else, I love your your lines are like wonky and fun, and the the drawing is really good. It looks beautiful. Well, you I, know, Martha, I really appreciate okay. how you say things over and over again because like <laughs> holding the brush, holding the brush lightly, you know. Because it's like, how do you know, get it in my head, make it automatic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, it's true. It's just like when you go to a yoga class and they're like, breathe, breathe, breathe. And you're thinking like, <laughs> it's because we forget. Uh, so no. And Martha, the only thing I might say is you're, you're, you have some line, some white between your objects. 
And yeah. unless it's a unless it's a place with a highlight, I would say don't don't worry about letting those colors run together. And and because oh, okay. because what you'll do is you'll get some symmetry and some symbiotic flow happening. You know. Okay. And so just go ahead and let those kind of touch each other and they'll run together. They'll add more, more, um, more balance to the painting and it'll just look cool. Your paint will do cool stuff. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's great. Is anybody else ready to show something? Is something yeah, else here? All right. Spotlight. Oh, oh my nice. God. Oh, yeah. That's, That's great. great. That is amazing. Oh, you're very you're, kind. You're, Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Your honey jar is beautiful. Yes. Wow. Wow. Really? I'm blown away. I'm blown away. Yeah. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Thank you. You know what? One thing I might want to see for you, especially since, oh God, and your, your shadows look great. You know, and actually you guys, um, the shadows, can you keep holding it the way yeah. you were? <laughs> the shadows are, I, I see what, I, this is what, what, what Pamela and, and was talking about. The shadows are really good because you can tell that the, it's like the light is kind of cascading around, you know, it's actually in a different place in the object. So you can tell it's coming from, it's like from nine o'clock, but it's, you know, it, it, you did a really beautiful job. Oh, and the highlights are so good. Oh, that's just gorgeous. Yeah. That's just gorgeous. Literally. Really well done. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you very yeah. much. That's awesome. I didn't oh, like it for you. a long time. <laughs> uh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Of course. All right. Who else? I studied after, under the... After those two, there's no way. <laughs> yes, there is. Yes. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Yeah. Have to share. No way. Yeah. Come on, Mary. Let us, no. let us compliment you. <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> This is beginner, but oh, oh good. Yeah. no, it's oh, good. Look at you guys. See, it's yeah. so good. Wait, 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 Mary. <laughs> let us let us look at it again, please. Put it back yeah. up. It's I like so the flowers. Bad. It's bad. You guys were so good. No, the flowers. Oh no, oh, it's like really it good. It's like really it. good. Yeah, <laughs> it's, nice and, it's yeah. nice and loose. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, no, Mary. You're doing, you're doing great. You're doing great. And you are a beginner. So I, I mean, am, like, I am a beginner. Bravo. Look at what you're already doing. I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Wow. Oh, yeah. Cool. Okay. Hang on. Let me get the spotlight going. Pamela, can you show it? Up? I just got oh. you spotlighted. It's kind of dripping. <laughs> I'm oh having a yeah. Party. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> beautiful oh, I wow know. it's beautiful Sweet. my shadows are kind of weird but it's That's all right weird. well the shadows in the picture are kind of weird so yeah they are they are they are exactly but it's fun. thank you so much good yeah. that's the main thing jill, jill what do you got going on i'm not too happy with it but i'll show it yeah. All right, thank you. And it's dripping too, so. Okay, all right, back it up just a little bit. Okay, okay. Well, you know, it's, it. oh, you know why? It's I because of your a, background. I have a faded background. Oh, where, where you know, if you, put it? It, if you put it in front of your face, it's it's showing it. No, it's not. Oh, so Over just, to the, oh, 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 there, there we go, there we go, there we go. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, wow. I like it. That's why don't you like it? The jar looks so good. Yeah. What, what don't you okay like about that. it? Oh, I don't. I don't like the uh, <laughs> the flower at all. The flower oh. is terrible. Well, and uh, the jar and the orange are kind of too much the same color. Ah, well, they kind of are in the picture too. What do you guys think of of Jill's work? I think it's great. I, like I think it. it's great. Yeah. You guys yeah. are kind. Thank you. I like it. You know what I what I like about it is it has a freshness to it that is really is really nice. I mean, it looks like it's not quite done, and maybe it needs right. a little more con a little more contrast on the on the darker sides. But it has a freshness to it that I really like. I always All make right. my paints too watery, and so I end up with really light colors. Mm. Well, that's okay with watercolor. That's kind of how we start. And, um, you know, it is, it takes some practice to add more pigment. So maybe just, you know, especially for sketchers, because we want to be able to do it a little faster. And I, I, I struggle with that too. 
for real painting, it's good to start light because that's how we do it light to darker. When we're sketching, we want to get a little more oomph in there right away so that it doesn't take so long. So maybe just practice, um, you know, keeping working at your pigments so that you can add a little more pigment to paint to water ratio. Yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. I like the freshness of it. Yeah. Just work on the on the contrast with the back with the dark side and uh, after it dries. Yeah. All right. Mason, no, were you going to hold something up? Yeah, yeah, I got, I got one. Still a work in progress, but. Oh, oh nice. wow. Yeah. That's wow. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. That's oh, beautiful. You. you know, I like how you decompose the photo. And uh, Mary, before you freak out, Mason has been drawing for over a year now. So okay. don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's gorgeous. That's yeah, really gorgeous. It's yeah. really nice. Thank really you. nice. And and great keeping the highlights too. I feel like in watercolor, keeping the highlights is really a key, a key part. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's tricky. And how did you do tonight? You're muted. Okay. I, I started drawing with the drawing mind. And of course I ended up totally using the wrong papers. This is sketch paper. So this will show you ah. the, the limitations of paper. This is the limitations. Wow. Of paper. Wow. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, I think it's really good. I think it's great. Yeah. It's flattering. Yeah. I think it's fun. I kind think it's really fun. Yeah, but I mean, it buckles and the paper does weird stuff. But actually, I'm I'm really liking that this has like all these abstract shapes in yeah. it, which is really, really cool. Yeah, it's really <laughs> yeah. Cool. I like it. I do too. I like yeah, yeah. I really like your tangerine. Yeah, and those those wedges, like I can tell it's wedges, but yeah. it looks kind of abstract. I think Absolutely. it's really cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. You know, it is funny. I mean, what I love about this, and I know you guys are not just being kind to each other. I mean, I know when you're here, when you don't like something and then you hear compliments, you think everybody's just being kind. But but think about how, like, we saw Mary's stuff and she says, I don't like it. And we're like, actually, I really, I, I, there are things about that that I really like, you know, like, I, I love that you can take one subject and everyone makes it look so different because it's our hand, it's our eye, it's, 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 it's our skill level. You know, there's all kinds of things that play into our artistic voice. And I just find that really fascinating that we can be somewhere and looking at the same scene or take a still life and have the same objects. And yet the way it comes out through our hand and through our eyes and brain and how it's processed with our materials and our skill level, it all looks different, but it's all beautiful, right? Am I right? Like yeah. it's mm -hmm. all beautiful. Uh, and it all has something to say for it. So I really, I, I, one of the practices that I'm trying to do more of, but I really encourage you to do is look at your work in the morning and look at what you like about it. What worked, what didn't work, what don't you like, where, where could you have, where would you have done differently? Where have you, would you do better? Um, do you want to work on drawing the thing first before you paint it next time? Do you want to work on adding more oomph to your colors? You know, um, uh, there's there. I for one will tell you that I would like to use a waterproof pen next time. You know, <laughs> like, but there's always things to learn from. There's, but there's, but look at it with a with a constructive mind, not a critical mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the main thing is, and this is kind of woo woo, but I'm a yogi. So you'll have to forgive me. Like, <laughs> I really just want you to hang, like, just hang for a second and like, notice how you feel in your body that we've been doing this together for like two hours now. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I feel like excited. Mm -hmm. I feel like this energy in my body that I haven't felt in like a week now. Um, I feel this excitement of, of sharing this and being here and seeing all of your work. Um, I, I just kind of feel energized, you know, even though I'm actually not really super happy with mine either, you know, and that's, what's important to remember is it doesn't really matter what happens on the page. It's really about what's happening in us and the energy that we're creating and then sharing in the world because you know like we we create a little moment of peace and then we take it out in the world and we just need more moments of peace in the world and so we're contributing to that i think with our creating and so i thank you for being here and participating in that all together yeah 
That was fun. Thank, Thank you. you. That was awesome, fun. you guys. Okay, well, I'm going to check the quarantine rules, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be on Zoom again next week. Oh, there's another dog in the picture. Hello. Oh, so this is Zoe. Oh, oh. <laughs> Zoe. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Zoe. Oh, really? Talk about participating in the peace in the world. <laughs> Hello, <Aww>. beautiful. <laughs> I think she'd like That's licorice, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's a pretty gentle he's a pretty gentle giant <laughs> he has a lot of pint-sized friends <laughs> he usually just lies on his back so that they're not afraid of him oh <laughs> what a nice guy yeah and does the pause all right then well I sh probably should take my voice and give it a rest but um but thank you so much for being here and keep creating if you have even just a few minutes um, but if not, I'll send you an email and we'll at least do it again next week somewhere, Thank probably you. here. Hope you, you. Hope you feel yes. better. Hope you feel better. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.